Hi! Today we're talking about hats, or more specifically, why we stopped wearing hats. Hats were a part of the Western fashion since always, since the beginning of time. Some of them were purely practical, protecting your head from the cold or from the heat. Some of them were demanded by social or religious customs. And some of them were just elegant pieces to show off your fashion sense. But somewhere along the 20th century, we lost them. We lost hats. What happened? 20th century was in many ways revolutionary when it comes to fashion history. It was the century clothing transformed from being handcrafted, meticulously produced, multi layered elegant pieces to mass-produced, simplified, minimalistic garments. So much has changed during this hundred years. In comparison, if we look at fashion from 1601 and 1699, it went from ornamented heavy structured dresses to some other ornamented heavy structured dresses. In 20th century, we went from handmade lace tea gown worn over a corset, a pair of drawers, and petticoats to Kate Moss's black mini dresses. We dropped so many items of clothing over time, one of them being hats. The hot revolution uh, started around World War I. The world quickly changed from lazy summer picnics to the cold brutality of a world conflict. While most women still wore hats, to be honest, it was the first crack in the hat idol. You know, sometimes when you're nursing a dying soldier or working at a factory or working on a field that your husband can no longer attend to because he's gone, hats just proved a bit impractical. That doesn't mean they were gone or that they were simplified. Actually, it was during the First World War when some of the craziest designs in fashion history happened. <laughs> because of the war, the fabrics and the millinery supplies were scarce and the designs mostly focused on elaborate forms instead of the decoration or, or the size of the hat. 1920s saw one of the biggest fashion revolutions of our times. Both women's and men's fashion became much less formal and for the first time it was widely available to the middle class. Because of that, working class people that weren't so obsessed with the idea of hat being a reflection of your morality and social position, sometimes they just chose not to wear them. Again, these were just some cases and the majority of people still covered their heads when they were going out. But it wasn't so uncommon anymore, even in the high society, to remove the headwear during more private outings or garden parties or just chilling with friends. The formal rules and guidelines of clothing and hat wearing were still used, but mostly in the higher society. And it wasn't so terrible if someone broke them. On the contrary, that made an impression of being modern and forward-thinking, which was slowly becoming a desirable trait rather than a shocking controversy that it used to be before the war. In 1930s, fashion, at least women's fashion, seemed to be longing for some of the traditions that 1920s just ignored. <laughs> Skirts got longer, waists got more defined, and all sorts of elegant accessories such as gloves or brooches or hats completed the look. While in the 1920s the basic shape of headwear changed rather slowly, with the famous cloche hat taking over most of the latter half of the 20s, 1930s saw a wide variety of hat experiments. At the same time, some more options appeared when it came to less formal clothing. For a more toned down and informal wear, women would wear berets and men would don tweed caps. Then another war came and the harsh reality made following the fashions a lot harder. You know, mass evacuations, bombarded cities, closed factories, occupation, rationed goods, hardly make it easy to care about your appearance. And yet wearing hats was still such a basic aspect of life that people chose to do it even in the most difficult conditions. Designers still still worked on elaborate and fancy hat designs and women did everything to get their hands on, you know, ads or fashion magazines. Many would make hats out of old boots or old blankets and turbans and scarves were massively popular at the time because you could just put it on and you wouldn't have to do your hair and you would still look fancy. Despite all that, more and more women, usually younger women, chose not to wear hats, especially during summer months. And in some of the Nazi-occupied countries, wearing elaborate rich hats and clothing not only contrasted with the less wealthy,
Nazi, but could also mean that the person chose to collaborate with the occupier. After the war, the approach to hats was changed forever. On one hand, people, especially women, wore hats gladly because they finally could do it. They were finally able to wear what they want to wear and buy things that weren't available before. The elegance that they had to fight for during the war was finally within reach, at least in the Western countries. On the other hand, war has shown everyone that hats maybe were not a matter of life and death and people could do without them. In countries with newly established communist governments, hats were considered a symbol of the capitalist enemy and were usually looked down upon in the first couple of years after the war. The fashion designers of the 50s worked really hard to compensate for the difficult wartime. Hats of all shapes and sizes were promoted in the magazine, but most women chose simpler and smaller hats, such as pillbox hats or fascinators. We often hear family stories about how you weren't allowed to leave the house without a hat on, but that only seemed to apply to business wear or Sundays. If you look at street photos from that time, hats are visible but definitely nowhere near as common as they were before the war and it's completely normal to see people without any headwear on, on on these photographs let's just say hats quickly went from being compulsory to being socially accepted but not a requirement the 1960s saw another huge fashion revolution which basically brought us the fashion as we know it today full of different styles and trends allowing more individuality it was also the first decade in a long time where hat makers began to really struggle while french designers couldn't really agree on where to go next with the fashionable silhouette the brits used that moment to completely turn fashion around with the Beatlemania around the corner, it turned out that fashion doesn't have to address only grown-ups and that teens also make a very good marketing target. 1960s was the decade when fashion shifted from being designed for stately grown-up matrons to celebrating youth. And this was a final blow to centuries-old hat-wearing custom. Hats were always considered an elegant and refined grown-up accessory. So they weren't a really good match to colorful miniskirts and patent leather go-go boots or men's colorful shirts and bell-bottom jeans. Hats also required constant attention, worrying about the wind blowing it off, checking if they're in the right position, securing them with hat pins or straps. With the youth dictating fashion, hats became not only impractical and redundant, but also old-fashioned. Because suddenly the point of fashion wasn't to be elegant anymore, it was to be cool. From that point onward, fashion designers have tried multiple times to bring back the hat wearing custom, but to no avail. Even if it was moderately successful, like the 70s wide brim hat trend, or the elegant Lady Diana styles of the 80s, or 90s bucket hats, the trends were quick to fade and they were only adapted by a small percentage of society, leaving the rest of people still hatless. Hats were doomed, elegance wasn't cool anymore, and neither were hats. Nowadays we see headwear as extravagant. Even in summer, a wide brim straw hat worn in an underground station would probably raise some eyebrows. And in winter, a felt fedora is considered impractical because it doesn't cover your ears. The problem with headwear was that it used to be matched to the outfit that you're wearing. You had different headpieces for formal dresses, different pieces for sports or evening wear. Today hats just usually don't match your outfit. You're leaving your house in a pair of jeans jeans and a t-shirt and somehow wearing an elegant hat with that would make the whole look laughable. But if we find hats so old-fashioned and funny, why are we still so fascinated by them? We love watching royal weddings and commenting on people's headwear choices. We pay way too much money to attend horse racings just to be able to wear hats without being judged. We love seeing them on fashion shows and fashion weeks. A lot of modern wedding outfits feature a discreet fascinator. Maybe it's the centuries-old hat wearing tradition awakening in our blood. We live in a time when, as we like to believe, we're more accepting of different looks and trends and fashions. And yet when someone decides to wear a hat, they're somehow not cool or too much. And before you disagree, imagine a 16-year-old high schooler showing to his class in a fedora, or a 30-year-old woman attending a job interview in a fancy 1930s hat. I myself have tried wearing a hat in public and I was literally bullied a couple of times, so I stopped doing that. 
hat. So next time you see someone wearing a hat, don't stare at them and don't make them feel like they're too extravagant or they're doing too much. Think about how if all our ancestors saw us today, the hatless people, including you, would be the crazy ones. So to sum up, there is a lot of factors that went into it and it's difficult to say which factor was the biggest. Who knows, maybe we'll have a hat-wearing revival in a couple of years. The 20s are already here, so why not bring the cloche heads back? It can cover up your bad hair days. <laughs> anyway, that's all for today. Cheers to all the hat wearers. Thank you for being brave and see ya.